Hi folks, today we're going to be continuing off from where we left off on Thief Simulator Episode 1. This is going to be Episode 2. And last we did was Greenview 109 and 110. And today we're just going to be continuing more of an intro thing. Pretty soon it's going to get to just tutorials on each specific house. But uh, this is just to continue where we left off. And where we left off, Vinny asked us to learn lockpicking 1. So let's see here, we have a saucepan, we have a pot, old toaster, let's go sell all that stuff. Welcome back. Let's go learn our lock picking one. And then he's going to give us some more instructions on what we're going to do. So learn lock picking one. So in here... This is the start menu. You can see up here skills. Let's go over to skills. And this is our entire skill tree, focus tree, whatever you want to call this tree. And uh, every single time you level up, you get a skill point. Now, when you spend a skill point, it takes, of course, one of these away. And you have to level up further by stealing more stuff to get more skill points. So let's do what he asked. So let's learn lockpicking one. I'll give us a call right here. Great. Now, go buy yourself a DIY simple lockpick on Tools for Thieves. Okay, yes, Vinny, we will do that. But before we do that, I just want to continue showing you guys this tree. So, as we progress down the tree, you see there's a little line here and then a line that branches out here. This line, it, all it means is that you can't learn, you know, agility one until you learn lockpicking too because that connects to this you can't progress without that another thing to focus or to remember sorry is you cannot go too far in the focus tree or sorry the skill tree without getting to a certain level so there's actually minimum levels you need to achieve to be able to purchase some skills so there's two criteria that you need to remember before purchasing skills and you might want to save your skill points as well, because throughout the story, Vinny will be asking you to learn specific skills. And if you spend your skill points all on stuff that he, uh, I guess, doesn't care about for the story, you'll have to continue trying to steal stuff to level up just to continue in the story. So let's go on the computer on Tools for Thieves again. We're going to buy our first thing here, a lockpick. Before you get yourself into trouble, try it on a training lock. I left one in the garage. Alright, so we'll go down here to the training lock. Now, it's a absolute meme in the Thief Simulator community. I've seen Reddit posts and people are like, uh, I beat the story a hundred lockpicks later. Uh, these lockpicks break so easily. I'll show you right here. You have to line it up. It says here at the bottom find the correct angle and then line it up with the bobby pin so let's go here and it tells us there you did a good job on that old TV in the empty house for a real job you gotta scope the joint go to 111 by 7 a.m. and watch alright we will do that this is gonna be the tutorial for tenant routines but I will actually explain tenant routines when we get there. For now, I'll continue off what we left off at. And that is the training lock. This training lock is actually super easy to get past. It's when it comes to the real locks. Oh my goodness, it's always different. It takes a bit longer. You have to kind of move the body pin a bit more and the lockpick breaks so easily. It drives me absolutely nuts. I have methods for what I do when that happens. I've gotten better at doing lockpicking, so that doesn't typically happen much anymore. But still, oh my goodness, when you're starting off, it's a nuisance how many lockpicks you break. So let's head off to Greenview Street. Now, he asked us to go find a tenant routine, and we saw a tutorial on how to do it. I didn't keep it up for long. In your game, you will see it, and you can read it. But... If you mark a tenant routine, you know what that tenant is doing for six hour periods. So it's 12 to 6, like midnight to 6, and then 6 to noon, noon to 6, and then 6 to midnight. 
So it's in four six hour periods. So you need to learn four tenant routines in any time between those periods to get the whole period. So he said, a, he said to go to 7 a.m. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. There we go. So we'll go to 111 over here, and it actually tells us where with these little diamonds. So we'll go here, and we see a tenant. Now, mouse, mouse button 3, that's the scroll wheel. Click on that. There's a box in there. Wait for them to leave and get me that box. Sounds good to me. So, now that we learned that tenant routine, we can go up here into notes. Now the notes will show the info we have on a house, so the very, this is the second one we ever did. And it shows the stuff here. There's the baker, that's the very first one we ever hit. Break their dishes. And now the carters. When you learn a tenant routine, it will show up here. And not only does it show blue for when they are out, and red for when they are home. It will also say where they are in the home which is actually very important for later on in the game, and you will grow to notice that later on. Now the gray here is the spots we don't actually know. In this game, I tend to actually run around a lot and learn tenant routines, just so I can have them all handy for whenever I want to hit a house. So it's very useful to learn the tenant routines. Just find a tenant that is home and use that scroll wheel button to, or whatever you set your hotkey to, to learn that tenant routine. So let's see, one of these guys leaving, they're leaving at 9 a.m. Well, the second tenant's leaving at 9 a.m. That's a very small house. It's far too risky to hit that house when even one person is home. But later on, you won't have a choice. So let's go in. Thank goodness this is not a lockpick here, but this door probably will be, yeah. Let's crack this one open. Yeah, I didn't break it, I was pretty close to breaking it. So let's quickly grab some stuff here before we grab that box. I hope they have some good stuff here. Oh, that's some good stuff. 100 bucks, we like that. And these guys are getting home at some time that I'm not too sure. Oh yeah, I only have it learned till 12, so we know we have from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. to do whatever we need to do. That's a very good amount of time. So let's grab this this box with shady content apparently. And my, my bag's not even half full, but this house doesn't seem to have much, much to offer. Now nobody's around, so you know what, I'm actually gonna snag this TV too. Because why not? I don't know how much this TV's worth, I don't remember. We sold it to Vinny on Black Bay, so whatever that price is divided by two is what we will get for this TV at the pawn shop. Oh, this guy's taking a sweet time to carry this TV. Actually, you know what? Old TVs are really, really heavy, so I understand. Now, do I want to hit another house while I'm here, while I have the bag space? I think that the answer is yes. So let's go back to 110, or 109, sorry. Move, there we go. Let's hop in here, nobody's gonna be home, no need to learn tenant routines, if there are no tenants. But apparently, even though there are no tenants, the ghosts in the world are generous enough to restock the supplies for us to steal. So let's grab whatever we can. And we'll hit the road before this pedestrian comes and sees us and reports us. Now, I didn't mention before because I forgot to mention before, but when you leave with a large item, you cannot leave on foot. You must go via a vehicle. So let's go. Yeah, if you grab a large item and try to leave on foot, it'll drop the item and you won't even be able to keep it. So you have to leave in the car with putting it in the trunk. So let's go home because I saw a green star so we can sell something on Black Bay. I don't remember what it was though. Let's 
Send the block box via BlackBerry. And it would probably be an other, yeah. Hundred dollars for that, okay. I'm not gonna complain about that. Let's also sell that radio we found. There it is. Nothing else, I don't th Oh! Old toaster, they seem to want that. I'm not gonna complain about that either. The Lombardis think their friend on Greenview needs a new window. But they think the one they got's fine. Go prove them wrong. Alright, so... Let me just go through this tutorial. This is the sleeping in the parking lot. I mentioned this in the first video, but in case you guys missed it. You can sleep in a parking lot as if you're sleeping in the bed, and it will pass time to whatever time you set. So let's go to the pawn shop and sell the rest of the stuff. Welcome back. Let's sell... Okay, so, they, so we sold the TV last week for 80 probably, and now the pawn guy is taking it for 40. So not bad income, but I mean, still not desirable until we get to some later houses. And oh yes, yeah, sorry, Vic, Vinny wanted us to go break that window on Greenview 111, I think he said, or 112. So let's go do that. Ah, yes, it is 112. I do remember this one. So, when it comes to breaking a window, good luck doing it stealthy. Now, what I mean by that is when I did it on 109, 110, there were no pedestrians nearby and there's no tenants there. But when you're doing it at another house and somebody's going to be home, which is, you know, every house other than 109 and 110, it's likely to have a tenant home, you're probably going to get caught. So, that tutorial I showed you on how to hide from the police in the last video will very much so come in handy at this point in the game. I'll see if we see any tenants inside. Okay, I don't see any here. Oh wow, I really don't see any here. Well, screw it, let's break their window anyways. And I've been detected, so there is somebody here for sure. Let's hide in this garbage before the pedestrian comes. And yeah, so we made it outside. As we can see in the bottom left corner, the eyeball is not... I think it's red, if you've been detected. And it's not red. So we made it in here. The cops are going to look around, foolishly not check the dumpster, and leave. While we're here, we can read this tutorial. Yeah, yes. Okay, so I did mention this the first week, too. Walk right by it. You know, I do know a few police officers personally, and I know they would say the police officers on Greenview Street are not the best in training or skill, considering they just completely pass by a dumpster, look around the front of the house, and say, Oh, nothing's here, let's go! So let's let these guys go. And I don't know if he's going to give us a mission on the spot right now, or if he's going to give us a mission later on. I don't know. Sometimes the missions just show up in yellow text in the top right corner, and you kind of just have to see it. He doesn't actually call you. Which, I mean, his calls are okay. I, I, I can't complain if it's not a call. I don't know why he calls every single time there's a new line of line of dialogue, but I mean whatever. This guy's taking his sweet time. Gets on my nerves how long these guys guys take to leave. Okay, there we go. Maybe. Alright guys, I skipped ahead on waiting for these guys to leave. They did take their sweet time I as I pointed out what happened in the first week. And of course the window's still broken. I don't know if I should hit this house or if I should not. Oh. You don't want a pedestrian to see you go onto somebody's lawn. Because that's considered trespassing, of course. 
The problem with hanging around an area for too long is a lot of pedestrians spawn in. Oh, here's a tenant. Let's mark the routine, just to get it. Yeah, so, I mean, as you can see, I do mark routines as I get the chance to, even though we're not actually going to that house yet. Just because we're going to need it later on anyways. Why well, give myself more work later on if I just see them then and there? But either way, let's hit the road. I'm not going to hit that house now, because going to a location and then doing it immediately will have less pedestrians in the area because they spawn over time not immediately as you go into the neighborhood there we go you need to learn how to deal with standard locks well, that was quick but sure I could do that Lo oh I have to buy a lock picking two before I purchase the lock that's right and I have a skill point so open normal locks with a lock pick Let's do that. Now that we're in this area, I can show you guys a bit more. Appraisal. This will help you guys... Well, this actually disassembles jewelry. That We'll get to that later. But it basically... It tells you the price of items as you're looking at them in the house. So it's not kind of like unknown. Like, is this, you know, is this, uh, is this coffee mug worth a lot or is it not worth a lot? You'll know once you get to appraisal 4. I'm pretty sure at number four, or at level four, sorry, it tells you every single thing without fail, while one will just do a few, and then, you know, three will do a few more. This section will help you with lock picking, then hacking, and, you know, hijacking cars. That's basically the, you know, the lock picking, stealing, that kind of section. This agility is to help you. I guess do cool things as a human being like climbing vines which apparently you can't do until you buy a skill or buy it with a skill point and throwing bricks okay now seriously I'm pretty sure anybody could throw bricks whatever and then there's the backpack section which will actually make your backpack bigger which is insanely useful as you get later on in the game so now that we actually got that skill let's purchase that lockpick Is a regular lockpick? Yeah, it's not a DIY lockpick. The one that always breaks every five seconds. And then we'll get the tutorial. To use a lockpick, or sorry, use a lockpick to open standard locks, press the button at the exact time when the pin is at the bottom. That is not difficult. These can still break, but I don't think I've ever break broken one of these. Because you just lock it right when it gets to the bottom. Just hit it a few. There we go. There we go. He's gonna give us the next mission now. If it ain't broke, fix it with a crowbar. Word on the street is the toilet in Greenview 113 is not broke. Now there is actually one more thing I want to show you guys before we go. He did mention this on the first week. Sorry, the first episode. And I just want to show you again, so you can go to steal your forums if you're not very confident with the house that you're going to rob. Uh, the first ones he gave us were free, and going forward you actually have to pay for them. So if we don't know when these guys are going to be home, or not be home, and we don't know what's what security this house has, or a possible loot location, which is actually like a one-time steal, typically, we can buy them. Now, this house I actually know very well, so if you follow the tutorial closely, you won't have a problem, and there's no need to purchase information on the house unnecessarily. Am I carrying something? Do I need to go to the pawn shop? I don't remember. No, I'm not. And am I using anything... Am I holding anything unnecessary? As a matter of fact, yes, I am. And I'll show you guys why in a moment. I am going to leave my crowbar behind because it's actually not necessary on Greenview 113. And if you purchase the Steal Your Forums house security tip, I'm pretty sure it would reveal this wicked secret that I'm about to show you guys, but yeah, you don't need a crowbar for this one specifically. Greenview 113 is the house I went by earlier and marked one of their routines. So that means I already have one in the books. The other pr 
problem, we'll be getting the other routines. Now the routines are always going to remain the same. They're going to be in the same in your game as they are in my game. These in the regular story mode version of this game are not randomized and are always constant. So we see that they go out, at, they're, at least they are out at noon. But I actually know that that's nonsense and they go out at some point earlier. I don't know when that is. Actually, I think it's nine. Let's see. If I'm wrong, and we get caught, that's too bad. Problem is, I stuck around here for a bit though, so we have some tenants here to ruin the fun. Not tenants, sorry, pedestrians. But either way. Can't tell if he's in there, and oh my goodness, of course somebody's coming. Because you can't even go five seconds, it seems, without somebody ruining the fun. There we go. So now that nobody's looking, let's break right in here. Oh, for crying out loud. That's what I was talking about. Breaking those darn things. So actually, I'm going to show you guys what I do sometimes when I break one and I'm not in the mood to spend $20 to buy another one. $20 is actually negligible, but there's an easier way to deal with it. And that's simply just going to the game section, loading your last checkpoint. Because we slept in the car, so it saved. A voila. Now, I'm actually not confident that they are gone by 9, so I'm just going to go 11 just to be safe. I know they are gone at 11. And we have until 2, I believe. So it is actually not a problem. There we go. That was easy. Now here's that crazy, crazy thing I was telling you guys. Right here. And by the way, you can use the mouse button to... Note down that... There's like a house security tip, I guess. It's not just about tenant routines. So let's go in here. So that window is always open, and there's always a key right on this night side table. Let's grab that alarm clock. Now we probably want this guitar. Maybe we don't, but I do. Now let's grab the cash here. We don't have much space in the bag, so... I'll have to hit this house a couple more times, because this is a good one to hit early game. 113, remember that. It is super useful at the beginning of the game. If you need to level up, need to make some extra cash to buy another story mode item, whatever the reason is. Oh, come on. There we go. Now, this house actually has a locked door within the house. I don't know why. I have to be careful here, because people are walking, and they can turn in and look and see that you're trespassing. Ah, yeah, yeah. There we go. But if you move out of the way on time... Yeah, if you move out of the way on time, you should be good. So let's grab this. Let's grab a router, of course. Let's grab this phone thing. I think we need to break the toilet. Ay ay ay. I, I, I. I outspartaned myself. The mission's to break the toilet, and I said I could leave the crowbar at home. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm just gonna hit the rest of this house, and then I will go and get the crowbar. Gonna continue recording for the rest of this house, though, but then I'll bring you guys back for the recording after, er, for the crowbar after that. So, do I have any more bag space? No, we do not have any more space, so let's hit the road. Ah, uh, we have another hour, too, of this empty house. Very unfortunate that I forgot the crowbar. Really played myself there. So I'm going to bring this stuff home, sell it on Black Bay, and I will skip ahead and I will see you guys when we get back to this house.
All right, we are back, and I did sell all the stuff, the rest of the stuff we had, just to actually empty my pockets so I can, you know, kind of hit the house again once we get here. Now, if you deselect an item, or if you put it away, sorry. Whoop, put that. We gotta put that away. Pedestrian sees us with that. It's over. So, in emptying my pockets, I did actually get rid of that Yamaha guitar on Black Bay, and it brought in heaps of cash, so I definitely suggest you guys take that. And we're gonna use the key that we took the first time we were here. Oh, we do want that. So although they take a lot of sp although, although the guitar, sorry, took a lot of space, it was really worth it when we sold it on Black Bay. I don't know if there's much more stuff here. Oh, yes, we do want that, too. Do we want anything else here? Why don't we grab that microwave? Oh, there's some cash there. I want to get that before the pedestrian comes. Let's get up and get out of there. Grab this router. Of course, routers... Oh, no, we cannot. Not enough space. That bloody crowbar. Alright, you know, I'm going to close this door. I don't want anybody seeing me doing this. And boom. There we go. So how should we get out of here? Front door it is. Let's do that. Okay. Now please also note, for some reason people can't see you through these windows. It's only actual windows. So door windows, people can't see you through. But at the same time, and it's actually kind of problematic, you can't see through them either. So although you can physically see through those windows, you can't mark tenants through those windows. You actually need to do it through a regular window, which sucks. But it's all good. Now I'm fairly confident we finished the tutorial part of this video, or sorry, part of this game. So going forward, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, going forward in the following weeks or releases or episodes, it's not going to be as much game tutorial rather than it's going to be more mission tutorial and house tutorials. I got a pretty lousy score for that. For the next task, I need you to learn how to climb a lattice. Like a man spider, you know? Alright, so we'll actually do that before we finish for the day. It's just... Ah, uh, no, it's climbing vines, so we actually have to get to agility level 2. We do have the skill points to do it, so we will do it, but we will continue with that on the next episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Looking forward to episode 3 with you guys. It's going to be, like I said, it's going to be more specific house tutorials, game tutorials. You guys should pretty much have it down at this point. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Till next time.